So here we are talking about, we want to look at the expression for centripetal acceleration. So if we consider a body moving in a circular path with the center O, if it starts at point A and goes to point B, at point A, the magnitude of its velocity, uh, if I draw a line tangential at point A, okay, at 90 degrees to OA, then that will represent the, ma will represent the magnitude of this velocity of the body. If it moved it to B with the same velocity, then I, if, if I draw a tangent at point B, uh, then, um, of course, making an angle with this radius, OB, then uh, that will represent, this BE will represent the magnitude of the velocity, okay, of this body. So I said if I take this change to be very small, if it, is more, if it has moved from A to B in a very small time uh, del T, then at this point, uh, del T or sigma T, uh, then sigma theta is going to be a very small angle that is going to be uh, obtained here, and it will be the same angle geometrically when you go beyond here, you will see that this will be the same angle. So what happens? Uh, what happens, I need to generate a vector diagram for these velocities. So if I draw, a, if I create a point O somewhere, and I draw to scale a line that is um, perpendicular to AD to represent the magnitude of, um, of velocity, I can say maybe one centimeter on paper we represent 10 meters per second, depending on the magnitude of this velocity here. So I'll draw, I'll draw that line, and this will be OA. Okay, this is going to be representing vector A. Then I do the same with this line that is moving from uh, from B to E. But uh, we are taking an assumption that since this time is very small, uh, the, the change when you observe A to B, it is basically going to be uh, almost the same as a line. So the satura, uh, the satura component will tend to disappear when the time from here to here is very small. So the code here, will be still remaining uh, as, as if I remained in this such a path. So I will take a straight line from A to B, from A to B, because the time change from here to here is very small. It will be as if I remained on the same point. And so uh, that means I'm going to draw a point from, um, uh, if I get the velocity, I'm going to draw a point, I mean a line, I'm going to draw a line that is, perpen that is parallel to BE. So if I draw a line parallel to BE, in magnitude, okay, um, in magnitude equal to the velocity of this body at B, so this will represent vector B. So if I join A to B, this will represent the A to B vector. So, now, I will say, triangles, triangles O, A, B, and O, A, B are similar. So, if they are similar, I can say that um, this AB AB okay divided by let me say maybe OB 
will be the same as if I had this a b divided by divided by o b. But what are we interested in? We want to get acceleration. So we know that acceleration is equal to change in velocity. Change in velocity divided by the change in time. So that is change in V times, I mean divided by the change in time. Okay. Now, how can we get the change in velocity? The change in velocity is actually going to be the velocity at this point minus the velocity at that point, or the velocity at this point minus the velocity at this point, which is the same as AB, okay, divided by, divided by time. But what is, um, is, um, to get time, no, it is distance, distance divided by uh, speed. So, what is the distance the body will have moved? The body will have moved the distance that we are seeing here, A to B. So, if it moves the distance A to B, um, okay, then what is the speed? What is the speed required for it to, to move from here to here? Is obviously um, is going to be it is going to be this v, but v we are saying it is being represented by um, either o a or o b, but let's take it to be v. So our t will equal to the distance that we are saying a b divided by v. So now, if the distance covered is a, b, and the, velocity, the speed is v, we can still bring it in here, and we see what that becomes. So acceleration will therefore equal to, will therefore equal to a, b, okay, divided by so this will be times v divided by uh, divided by. But according to what we have here, from one where a b divided by o b is equal to tomorrow a b divided by o b. Okay. So we can uh, look at uh, we can look at what is uh, a b. Okay, so our AB is equal to this AB um, times OB divided by this small OB. So if I bring it in here, our acceleration will be, what is AB? It will be so acceleration, we are saying this is going to be a b out of v divided by, so we multiply by o b, then divided by a b times o b. So a, this and that will go, we will have v times o b divided by this o b. So if we are taking magnitude, okay, we are taking magnitudes, this OB is actually the same as V. So A will equal to V times the magnitude of OB divided by OB. This is the same as A times, this is the same as V times V divided by R. And therefore, our acceleration will be v squared divided by r. So acceleration for any object 
or body moving in a circular path will always equal to v squared divided by r, whereby v is the magnitude of its velocity and r is the radius of the path, the radius of the circular path. But we also know, we know that v is equal to r omega, whereby omega is the angular speed, which will be um, in radians per second. So if we substitute it in here, that means our A can be R squared, omega squared, divided by R, and this will always also be R omega squared. So we have two equations. We have acceleration equal to V squared out of R, or R omega squared. Mm -hmm. Then, what about if A uh, is equal to V squared out of R? Then we can always also say that uh, our V can be square root of A R. Okay? If you want it, this one to be now uh, in, the, in the terms of omega, then it will still come to be R omega.